Okay, here's a small video I've made of the arcade cabinet that I'm building. There it is. Uh, basically, it's a flat screen, so it's not very big in terms of thickness. Um, computers all contained inside, and it's sitting on this table right now. Uh, let me show you around the back. The back side, there is a copper panel uh, that basically has a uh, mini ATX uh, or a micro ATX uh, power supply built right in. Um, a power switch that I installed so you can turn on power externally. Obviously the power plug. Uh, this button isn't used right now. These two push buttons control the volume of the monitor. Um, conveniently the monitor has a built-in speaker so that helped uh, simplify things. There's a serial port that's um, basically uh, extended out from the motherboard and then uh, Ethernet and S-Video which I haven't actually tried yet but you should be able to hook this up to a TV and watch this on a um, big screen and then I've got um, a set of four push buttons for administrative control on the back uh, with the uh, DVD burner for um, loading software. And okay, you just turn it on here and the first thing you notice is um, the push buttons are backlit with LEDs all of the game buttons on top obviously this is um, deposit coin for player one and player two there's another red uh, push button on either side for coin deposit and then these buttons of course are for um, player one and two start Okay, the first thing that loads is the front end. Um, I've got a fancy startup movie here that has a neat animation of an arcade, uh, typical of the 80s. MTV in the background. Multiple arcade machine emulator. That's the primary emulation package that I'm using. And now, here's my front end software. Um, this front end allows me to launch multiple emulators, and what that means is, in addition to MAME, which allows me to play all the arcade machines that used to uh, exist out there, I can use the joystick here and I can select Daphne, which is an emulation program that lets me play Laserdisc games. Uh, I have Nintendo on here, the Atari 2600, uh, Apple II, and I threw on here uh, Windows Media Player so that I can play videos, and there's a batch files tool that lets me um, do file manipulation and so forth from within. Uh... Okay, so back here at MAME, uh, we want to enter this particular emulation package to play some arcade games. So the user interface um, I set up lets you use the uh, player one start sort of as a click or a, a select. So we're going to select that particular emulator. And now the screen changes, and it's showing me a list of my favorite games for that emulator. I can scroll through this list using um, just a joystick or I set it up so I can use my spinner to scroll. With the right joystick I can um, page down or if I use um, right and left I can actually page up and down by letter which is kind of nice if I know that I want to play um, well I don't know Space Invaders uh, and that's down here with the S's um, I, can, I can jump to that pretty easily. So let's do that. Let's go um, let's launch Space Invaders and I, again to select the game, I just push the player one start key. Um, now this particular uh, game, Space Invaders, was originally created on um, hardware that had the screen oriented in portrait mode. And um, so I've stayed true to that by um, orienting my uh, particular version of this game in that mode as well. And in addition, this game also had a cocktail table set up. And I don't know if you're familiar with cocktail tables, but they usually were arcade games had flat glass on top and you had uh, players on either end. So this particular uh, game will let me do that. And I'll put in two credits by just hitting coin entry twice. And I'm going to hit two player start. And um, what's going to happen, and this is really kind of slick, is it's going to allow me to play um, the original Space Invaders. And of course it emulates all the sounds and everything. I mean, it is the original hardware, essentially, to being emulated here. Um, let's, just, uh, let's just die here, and then you'll see what I mean by um, how well, slick this is. Uh, player two now begins on a typical cocktail table from the other side, so the screen automatically flips over. Um, so that's pretty neat. Now I'm using the uh, player two joystick over here on the other side of the table to play it. Um, we can get out of any program by hitting this administrative button on the back, and it'll bring us back to our um, front end. 
Let's just do Smash TV for fun here. You get a chance to see how this program, how this game works. Um, so here we are. This is um, Smash TV. I'm going to put in a couple of credits. And we'll do uh, two player. I configured this game because the arcade version has four joysticks on it, so you got to use two hands here. Um, one moves your guy around and the other fires. Um, so I'll, of course I can I can run the guy around with this. Oh, did I start with this player? Yeah, I guess I started with this player. Here we can get this guy in too. So here I am just going nuts on these guys. If you've ever played Smash TV, you know that it's a uh, pretty gory game. Of course, this guy's moving around too. We're going to have a lot of fun with Smash TV. Demo here, uh, this is Gauntlet 2. And there it is, it loads just like a uh, regular arcade game would. Very few of us saw the arcade managers turning on the arcade machines, but this is what it would look like when you first start up Gauntlet 2. So let's give ourselves some health here. And I'm the Red Warrior. Of course, I can let anybody join the game here. I got four players to join. And actually, if I want to be an elf, I think I can select elf. Yeah, the Gauntlet 2 lets you pick essentially any character you want to of you know, your color. Um, I think it's better in the levels if you spread the um, players out to the different characters. But Anyway, so, you know, the game continues as you guys are probably familiar with. So here's off the wall, putting some credits here, we'll hit two player. And you give us a spin here, you probably remember that. This guy's bouncing it. Boing. Just like playing this, ah, uh, you know. I can't play this with two players easily, so. Need some help, guys. Anyway. So that's off the wall. Uh, Nintendo's there. Uh, we'll open up Daphne and uh, launch, launch Dragon's Lair. Now, of course, this is obviously, like I said, using Daphne. This is another emulator. It's not MAME, um, but it lets you play Laserdisc games. So let's put in a couple of credits because Dragon's Lair wants two coins, so you have to press this twice. Um, we'll go ahead and start up Dragon's Lair. I'm horrible at Dragon's Lair, but you'll get a chance to see the gameplay. I mean, it's just like the real thing. Ooh, the ropes. Yeah, my timing is all off. Let's drink the potion. <laughs> anyway, that's Dragon's Lair. Yeah, we can get out just like any of the other game applications. You exit with that admin button. Now we'll try loading uh, Load Runner, for example. I'm emulating an Apple IIe. It's always interesting. Apple obviously has a lot of keys on its keyboard, so to maintain proper emulation you've got to do some creative mapping with keys to the buttons on the control panel uh, joystick is analog and these are not analog joysticks so you know you got to do a little bit with each game to try to make it work but um for the most part you should be able to just hit like a player one start and um if i did things right then we should be able to play load runner like we did uh, back when we were kids so you know here i am running around Just like the thing. <laughs> 